Hello and welcome to today's Wednesday Words with me, Victoria Reynoldson, communication and culture coach. Today we're going to be talking about body language and I came across some fascinating statistics recently. I read that the most popular TED speakers use twice as many hand gestures as the least popular TED Talks. I found that absolutely fascinating. I also read that there was a study that looked into the impact of your message and how hand gestures can add 60% incremental factor to the impact. Again, that said to me, there was something very important about body language and hand gestures that I wanted to share with you here today. So I'm sure you're aware that you do use body language, but are you aware how you use it? What are you doing with your body? What exactly is happening? And have you ever stopped to think about how it works in person compared to virtually? I'm sure that you think about the fact that in writing that you can use lots of different types of techniques when it comes to emphasizing what it is you want to say. So in writing, of course, we have bold, we have italics, underlining, and all sorts of different techniques to do with font size and color and, and the type of font, of course, let alone all the other formatting skills that we have to do with writing. And we don't have this visible effect when it comes to our spoken communication. However, saying that body language is sort of like this. It's like the visual element, the way to help emphasize and underline our key words so that our message comes across in the way that we want it and has great impact on the people who are listening to us, whether it's a meeting, a presentation, whether it's virtual or in person. So what I want to share today was more detail around this. How do we use our body language? What is important to bear in mind? And also I will talk about how does this vary between in-person and virtual meetings and presentations. So the first thing to think about is that body language is incredibly personal. We all have our own individual ways of doing it. And there will be certain gestures that we use, certain ways that we express ourselves, which are particular to us. So today is really about general principles. The other really important part of this is to think about body language as having different levels. So if you imagine a volume dial, let's imagine a, a sort of large volume dial, then you can turn the volume dial up and down. So you can be conscious in increasing the level of your body language and decreasing it. This might be important because if you um, are come from certain cultures, you either may have very little body language that you normally use. And for some cultures, they use a lot of body language. So you may need to find the balance that works for you with the culture that you're working with. I would say that for English speaking cultures, the right pitch we're going for is expressive, and finding ways to really emphasize our key points without getting too dramatic. And what do I mean by dramatic? Well, dramatic would be waving my arms up in the air above my head or out to the sides where you can't see them, for example, in the virtual space. So we need to think about what is the right balance for the people we're communicating with. To start with, I like to think about the whole body. And I'm somebody who likes to stand, but you don't have to stand. Clearly there will be meetings where you'll be sitting down, but we can convey a lot by our total body about our energy, our dynamism, and how we feel about the particular topic of communication. So make sure whether you're standing or sitting that you really communicate the energy and how you feel about this topic. And there are many different ways that we can do this. We can move our body slightly. Obviously, we don't want to make too dramatic movements. We're not actors, but we do want to kind of have some level of, of movement there. You might notice that people lean in like this when they're listening very carefully to what you have to say. 
they also might lean in like this when they're saying something which is incredibly important and they really want to emphasize it. Um, so there's a couple of ideas about how your whole body might work. And clearly, if you're standing in person at an in-person event, then the way your body looks is, is very important. So make sure you're standing up, um, even if you're sitting down, actually sitting up nice and tall, that you are feeling kind of nice and strong in your body. You're not slouching or kind of got closed body language. There are lots, there's lots of research that says clearly this gives off not very confident uh, messages. So to create confidence, to show energy, make sure you're standing up nice and strong with your shoulders back and your chest out. So that's a bit about body movement. Now let's talk about the eyes. So with eye contact, um, let's, let's first of all talk about in person. In person, it is of course important to make eye contact with people. So let's imagine I'm presenting to a room or even a large meeting room. I would make sure that I was looking around the room occasionally like this and making eye contact with individuals. The important part here is that we do this naturally. So we do this in a slightly random way, rather than looking from person to person like this. In the virtual space, what you often will see me doing is talking to the camera. So I feel it's very important to talk to camera so that even though I can't see you behind the camera, you feel like I'm talking to you. And that's a great way to connect through your communication. But I don't just do eye contact. Occasionally I'm looking away, maybe thinking about what I want to say next, or even referring to my notes sometimes. And that's natural. And that works really well as well, because it, again, it's making sure that you're communicating at a very human level. So that's about the eyes. The next point is about the smile. And I think smiling is so important. Um, whether you feel happy that day, whether you're feeling that confident or not, if you just put a smile on your face, you will start to feel much better inside yourself and it connects incredibly well with others. So it is an important thing to do to make sure that you put the smile on, even if you're not feeling it inside. And finally, let's talk about hand gestures. <laughs> now, this is an interesting point. Are hand gestures good or bad? Hmm. Well, again, it comes to finding the right level for you and making sure that if you use hand gestures, you use them appropriately and you know kind of how to use them in a way which is expressive, but not over dramatic. Just a couple of tips in terms of thinking about the virtual space and hand gestures. So if I was in person, if I just stand back a little bit, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, I would normally have my hand gestures a bit further down, a little bit more sort of by my chest, even a little bit lower than my chest sometimes. But of course, in the virtual space, I'm much closer in. And so what I have to do with my hands, I have to bring them up like this. I have to bring my hands up so you can see them. So that's just one aspect to be aware of. The second part to be aware of with hand gestures in the virtual space is that you might need to turn the volume up. So we talked about the volume dial earlier and finding the right level for you. I noticed that during lockdown, my body language was much more expressive and slightly more exaggerated in this rectangle of the virtual space than it was in person. I noticed this when I went to an in-person event uh, at the end of last year, and I hadn't been in, at an in-person event for a while. And it made me laugh to realize this, that actually my body language had become more exaggerated. So just think about this. You might need to use more body language than you're used to in the virtual space just to create the same level of impact. So there you go. Those are my, my key thoughts about body language and how to use it effectively for your communication. I do hope you found today's Wednesday words useful. And as ever, I would love to know what you thought about this topic. What was particularly useful for you? What do you notice about your own body language? And what are you going to try out differently next time? I would absolutely love to know. Please, so please contact me and I'd like to hear your thoughts and comments on this particular topic. And clearly, if you have any questions at all, then please do get in touch as well. 
I share these Wednesday words, communication strategies and skills every single week. And I would, would love it if you would kind of subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not yet um, subscribing to my email to make sure you get the, uh, the information when it goes live, then do make sure via this link you sign up because I wanna make sure you receive this every single Wednesday and it goes directly into your inbox. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been great to share my thoughts on body language. I'm Victoria Reynoldson, communication and culture coach, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Wednesday Words.